There's a quote from BKS Iyengar that I'd like to share with you. He says, if you can adapt to and balance in a world that is always moving and unstable, you learn how to be tolerant to the permanence of change and difference. You learn how to be tolerant to the permanence of change and difference. What, what a gift that skill is. And the fact, the idea that we can turn to our yoga practice to help us cultivate that is just something that touches me deeply um, and it inspires me, I hope for you as well. So as we go through this practice today, uh, please keep that in mind. You may find some of the asanas challenging. The whole notion of balance is challenging, but work with it. Approach it with kindness, approach it with, um, with tolerance, and understand that it is the journey towards that is really what is ripe, rich with the fruit. Okay, as cliche as that may sound, it's very true. Okay, all right, I will leave, it, leave that with you for now and um, let's begin our exploration of balance. Hey there. If you have a cranky back, stiff neck, if you're overweight, anxious, or if you simply don't look, feel, or resonate with the images of yoga on social media, you will definitely want to check out my online course, Ayanger Yoga Fundamentals. All right, to begin, have a brick, okay? And you're going to stand on the brick here with one leg, okay? So stand with your right leg up on the brick and both legs are straight right can you see that both legs are straight i stand up but the foot that's on the floor is just touching with my tiptoes okay now allow your right hip to come out out that way okay just feel that and then bring it back in take it out bring it back in just a couple times okay you're just shifting the hips has nothing to do with bending the legs at all just shift at the hip okay now let's activate a little bit here and do this a little bit more intentionally okay so allow the right hip to go out and now from the outer hip all the way to the ankle bone push down pound the heel into the brick and see if maybe your left foot comes off the ground. Stand strongly into that right hip, suck it in. Good, and then let it release a bit, let the hip fall out and the toes will touch down. Okay, so again, outer hip, ankle bone, this whole outer line of the leg, you, it's like the intelligence there gets sharpened and you press the heel really strongly into the brick. Okay, let's do this a few times here, same side. Again, hip out, just let it be kind of natural, you know, you don't have to over exaggerate too much. All right, now outer hip to ankle bone, push down, pound the heel, suck that right hip in and allow the left leg to raise off the floor and then let it go and then again outer hip to ankle bone push down pound the heel pound the heel into the brick and allow your left leg to lift hold it and then let it go okay you can have your arms on your side here you can have them like so wherever gives you where you feel the most stable okay and you may find that the hip even just with a few rounds starts to uh to notice what's going on here it may get tired after doing this a few times that's okay that's what we're going for here okay outer hip to ankle bone 
down, pound into the brick, suck your right outer hip into the midline more, more, more. Let the left leg dangle and then let it go. Okay, last time here on the right side, outer hip to ankle bone, down, push the brick, suck the right hip into the midline even more, left leg is just dangling, both legs are straight. And then let it go, good. Okay, step down, pause here, and let's do the second side. All right, so now stand up on the brick with your left leg, and then again, just to, you know, sometimes to exaggerate um, the opposite action, it brings some clarity as to what, what we're after. Okay, so allow the left hip now to go this way, out, and just shift, right? Shift the weight. Shift your hips to the side and back, to the side and back. Okay, once you have an idea of that, like what does it mean for the hip to be out? What does it mean for the hip to be in? Then stand up straight, straighten your standing leg, the one that's on the brick, as well as the one that is floating, right? So right now my tip toes, just the tip of my toes are touching down. Okay, allow the left hip to exit. And now from the outer hip to the ankle bone, sharpen that line of intelligence. Descend, pound the heel into the brick, and now allow the right leg to just so almost levitate. Just lift up. Okay, hold it there for a moment. Left outer hip, suck it in. Good, release, let it go. Okay, it's very tempting to wanna to just bend the knee and stand normal, but please try to avoid that so that we can concentrate the action into the hips, into the pelvis in this very particular way. Okay, both legs straight again, allow the left hip out, and then from the outer line of your leg, descend, push the heel into the brick, and allow the right leg to lift. Outer left hip, suck it in, Hold it, and then let it go. Okay, you may find, I know for myself, I notice these micro movements. So I'm gonna start challenging the ankle, the arch, the area around your arches, as well as the leg, calf, shin, hip. You'll feel it in a bunch of different places. Okay, two more rounds. Let the left hip out, descend. Okay, outer line of the leg, push down, press into the brick, and allow the right leg to lift. Outer hip, suck it in, suck it in, suck it in. Maintain this, and let it go. Okay, last round here. From the outer hip to the ankle bone, cut down, push the heel, lift up on the right side, right? That right leg, it's a response. The work is being done on the brick. The other leg just lifts in response. Outer hip, suck it in. More, more. Good, and then release. Okay, step down for a moment. Tadasana. Okay, notice, observe yourself here in your Tadasana. Okay, moving along. So next what I want you to do is translate that action of drawing into the hip to help you in your balancing asana. And the asana that we're gonna explore today is Virabhadrasana three, okay? And we're gonna look at it in a few different ways. All right, so first attempt here, you can start in Tadasana and then raise your arms up, Urdhva Hastasana, okay? Now in Urdhva Hastasana, know that you're not just lifting your arm up for decoration, but as you raise your arm up, lift the sides of your body, okay? Extend up into your fingers. Now feet together, Tadasana, and I want you to create a dialogue here from your heel all the way to the tips of your toes, okay? As strongly as you press your heel into the ground, reach up into your fingertips. And then lower your arms down, okay? Phase one. Phase two, okay? You'll come to where we just left off. 
transfer the weight onto your right leg and now start to hinge at the hip okay hinge this is the hip crease right hinge from here but very intentionally so as you come forward the back foot is lifted and then i want you to move at the same pace okay as the arms come forward the leg lifts up and then come back to standing okay so you can go just a little bit so you can start to explore which moves faster okay so you're not coming down and then lifting the leg all right it's a dialogue here okay go for it arms up urdhva hastasana lift and lengthen transfer the weight onto your right leg and now hinge at the hip come to the tiptoes right the heel is already lifted and now moving at the same speed start to hinge a little more now remember that work we did with the brick outer hip of the standing leg suck it in reach 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 notice how the arms want to move faster reach into that lifted heel and then find the control on the way down as well lower your arms down tadasana yeah it's deceptively simple it may perhaps look like it should be easy and it's unlikely to be easy okay go for the second side urdhva hastasana arms up look up just see that the palms are facing each other get that rotation of the upper arms and now as strongly as you press into your heels reach up into the fingertips and create space between each row of ribs now this time transfer the weight onto your left leg hinge at the hip and moving at the same speed okay reach into those fingers reach into the lifted heel and now suck that left outer hip into the midline yes and see which one is moving faster and then can you find the control on the way up as well right I just saw for myself my foot came down into Tadasana before my arms were absolutely straight right so you want to explore this these tendencies okay it's not going to be perfect it's not about being perfect okay but use this as an exploration as a guide okay let's go again each side urdhva hastasana arms up lift yourself transfer the weight onto your right leg and now hinge at the hip hinge at the hip and which side is moving faster raise the leg a little more reach into those arms and stabilize at the outer hip of the standing leg as if you were standing on the brick push that heel down suck the hip in yes and figure out where do you want to pause maybe and play a little bit okay what's happening for you and then tadasana okay also be mindful of the concentration yeah right that level of engagement how much how much focus do you need to just even trigger the awareness at both ends of the body at the same time all right last time for this one stand in tadasana arms up urdhva hastasana reach 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 transfer the weight this time to your left leg and now hinge at the hip hinge at the hip virabhadrasana three okay move at the same speed reach into those fingers extend into the heel and then stand tall in that standing leg find it find it find it and then now find the control on the way back as well and then tadasana 
Okay, for this next presentation, set yourself up with a chair and at least one blanket. Depending on your height, you may want to stack two or three blankets to raise the height of the chair back. Um, or if you have a taller stool, a piece of furniture that kind of gives you that exact nice height for you to come into like an Ardha Uttanasana position, um, you can use that instead of a chair. Okay, I like to have the chair at the wall, just keeps it nice and stable. And then let's explore in this way. Okay, so you're gonna come into an Ardha Uttanasana position, but with your forehead supported on your setup. Okay, forehead supported on the setup, and then you're gonna walk your feet back, reach your hips back. Now first to begin with, just hold the sides of the chair. Okay, just hold there. Like so. Okay, now build your Tadasana. So big, broad feet, open up there, now lift your kneecaps up, lift your thighs up, and press your thighs back. Remember the sensations we've been working with in the hips, particularly that first um, little exploration we did on the brick, and from the outer line of your legs, sharpen that line, push into your heels, and suck the hips into the midline. Okay, now transfer the weight, still holding the sides of the chair, transfer the weight onto your right leg, and just like we worked in the, with that brick, push into the heel, make the right leg, um, excuse me, the left leg light, and start to lift it up for Virabhadrasana three. Okay, turn the back of the thigh open, so broaden your buttock away from the tailbone, reach into that lifted heel and raise the leg up. On your standing leg, push into that heel and again, suck that hip into the midline. Right outer hip, suck it in. Raise the left leg more. And then lower the leg down. Reach your hips back, Ardha Uttanasana. Take a couple breaths here. And then second round, second side. Kneecaps up, thighs up, press your thighs back. And now transfer the weight onto your left leg. And then make the right leg light, right? Push the heel, suck the hip in, and now start to extend your right leg, lift it up, Virabhadrasana three. Reach into the heel. Broaden the back of the thigh, so sort of kick that heel from inside out, and then lift the leg more. Now go back to the standing leg. Press down into your left heel, and vigorously suck that left outer hip in. Suck it in. Breathe here. And then slowly release. Lower the leg down, Ardha Uttanasana. Good and then slowly come up for just a moment. Okay, Tadasana. Okay, now I hope um, there may have been for you some similarities in the sensation, the, the um, almost like the character of the pose, where at the hips, there's just a resemblance to some of the work that we've been doing so far. Okay, if not, that's okay. Maybe seek it out, see if you might be able to notice some similarities and trigger um, a similar activation in the hips in that region. Okay, let's go for round two. And we're, this is a progression, so now it's gonna get a little bit more challenging. If the balance becomes too much of an issue, then just go back to what we were doing where you're holding the chair with your hands, okay? All right, so again, hinge forward, hips, Hinge at the hips and place the forehead on your support. Okay, now legs are together. And the first time we did it, I had you holding the chair like so. Okay, but now this time, if you wanna give this a go, you place your hands on your hips. 
Okay, wrap the elbows back. All right, and now everything else is the same. Okay, kneecaps up, thighs up, press your thighs back. Transfer the weight onto the right leg and now raise your left leg up. Yes, stand tall in that standing leg. Push the heel down, suck your right hip in and raise that left leg higher. Roll it from inside out, heel from inside out and lift it up. Find those micro movements, notice them and now stabilize. Push the right heel down, right hip, suck it in. Lower the leg down, Uttanasana. Feel, observe what's firing. What's not? <laughs> where are you strong? Where are you stable? And where might there be a little bit of weakness, a lack of consciousness? Okay, let's try to shift the dialogue. All right, second round here, sec excuse me, second side. Elbows back. And now shift the weight onto the left leg and raise your right leg up. Raise the leg from the inner leg so it rolls in the right direction. Okay, and now push into that left heel. Suck the left hip into the midline. Raise the right leg higher. Roll that heel from inside out, back of the thigh open, raise it higher. Extend into your heels, both of them. And then release. Lower your leg down, pause. Take your hands to the chair, bend your knees a little bit, walk forward and stand up tall. Tadasana. Okay, now this one I found very challenging and it kind of blew my mind the first time I started to work with it, just how challenging it was and how it, it really changed the, the dynamic of the pose. So I encourage you to play with it. We're gonna move on for right now, but please, I invite you to pause the video and do it a few more times do what you need, play with it. It's really, um, it's a good one, I like it. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Okay, let's start transitioning now closer towards the more classical presentation of Virabhadrasana 3. There's still a number of stages that I wanna take you through, but we're gonna move away from the prop heavy um, modified approaches and yeah just be in the middle of the room and working with the actions that we've learned so far okay so for this presentation start facing the small edge the narrow edge of your mat stand in tadasana but just maintain your hands on your hips here like so okay broaden your collarbones roll your shoulders back and lift your chest Okay, now from here, keep your eyes at eye level and take a big step back with your left leg. Big step back, okay? Now if you feel you can't take a big enough step back on your own just by stepping back like that, you can increase it, okay? And then I find I need to move my right foot a little bit to the side just to help me get around here, okay? And then raise your arms up. Reach up to the ceiling. Reach, 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 okay? Now roll the outside edge of your left foot down. Press that left thigh up and back and bend your knee for Virabhadrasana one, one. Sit down into that right buttock. Okay, from here, hinge at the hip and lay your abdomen on your thigh. Abdomen and thigh touching. Reach into those fingers. Okay, stay low in this right hip and then come back up. Virabhadrasana one. Straighten your leg. Step back. Tadasana. Pause here. 
Okay, that much, only that much. Now second side, Tadasana, hands on your hips, keep your eyes at eye level, take a big step back, this time with your right leg. Okay, you know we're going for Virabhadrasana 1, so you need to have enough space to get that correct bend in the front leg. Okay, make your adjustments if needed. Now roll the outside edge of your right foot down, press that right thigh, up and back, heel is down. And now, arms up, bend your front leg. Dip down into that left hip, left buttock, down. Okay, reach up into your arms. Maintain your back leg straight. Press that thigh up and back. Now from here, hinge forward. Lay your abdomen on your thigh. Reach, reach, reach. And then stay low in the left hip. Raise the torso back up. Straighten your leg. Big step forward, Tadasana. Find your breath. Okay, moving on. Same thing, we're gonna start the same way. So from here, eyes level, chest up, big step back with your left leg. Big step. Okay, Virabhadrasana one, arms up, and bend your front knee. Dip down, dip down. Now from here, hinge forward. This is where we left off. Abdomen and thigh touching. Okay, now this round, drop your fingers, drop your arms and just let your fingers touch the ground. If they don't touch the ground and your abdomen and thigh are touching, then you may need to add some bricks there, right? Raise the floor to meet you. From here now, watch my back foot. Okay, heel is currently down. I want you to shift the weight forward onto the front leg and just come to the tip of the toe on the back leg. Heel is down, shift forward and down. But notice that this hip and the abdomen and thigh relationship remains. Okay, I'm not lifting up to, lifting my hip up to lift my heel up. No, hip down, buttock down, abdomen and thigh touching, shift the weight forward and back. Five times, forward and back, forward and back, forward and back, okay? Now stay low in that right hip, raise yourself back up, Virabhadrasana one, straighten your legs, step forward, Tadasana. Find your breath. Hands on your hips, second side, and right leg, big step back. Big step back. Prepare yourself for Virabhadrasana, one. Arms up, and bend your front leg. Okay, as we've been working, straighten the back leg, and now hinge forward, lay your abdomen on your thigh. Stay there, then lower your arms down, okay? Now shift the weight, tip of the toes, and back. Stay low in the left hip, abdomen and thigh still touching, shift the weight forward and back. Forward and back. Forward and back. Forward and back. One more. Okay, now stay low in the left hip. Virabhadrasana one. Stay low. Pound the back heel down for stability. Raise your torso back up. Straighten your legs. And Tadasana. Breathe. Okay, are you ready to put it all together? Let's go. Okay, stand in Tadasana, hands on your hips, eyes level. Take a big step back with your left leg. Okay, Virabhadrasana, one. Arms up and bend your front leg. Okay, from here, hinge forward, lay your abdomen on your thigh. 
Now just as before, but this time with your arms extended in front, shift your weight forward and back, forward and back. Now this time come forward and maintaining the relationship, abdomen and thigh for as long as you possibly can, reach forward and straighten yourself up into your Virabhadrasana three. <laughs> and then lower yourself back down. Virabhadrasana one, stand back up and Tadasana. Okay? <laughs> yeah, that's the work. All right, let's go again. I'm gonna turn this way in case I'm not getting the full view here for you in the, in the video, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Okay, so second side here. Eyes level, big step back this time with your right leg and prepare for your Virabhadrasana one. Arms up and bend your knee, dip down. Stay low in this hip, hinge forward, abdomen and thigh connected, now shift the weight. Learn this, shift the weight, back, forward. Now transfer the weight more and slowly, Virabhadrasana, three. Reach into those arms, reach into that lifted heel. And then bend the leg, find the control. Virabhadrasana, one. And then Tadasana. Arms by your side, chest up. Breathe. Okay, there is so much good work in these two poses. And really like full body, right? Hips, pelvis, legs, but also these are beginning like gateway poses for back bending. So spinal strength as well as the thoracic opening. Okay, we're gonna go again. Um, I wanna point out to you what tends to happen in case you can sort of notice that tendency for yourself. And this is the inspiration for why I'm approaching these asanas in this you know, very specific way today. Okay, what I see often happening for students is once they're in their Virabhadrasana one, and then they come forward, in order to get this leg off the ground, they lift up here and then raise the leg up. And that's very different than staying low, staying low, transfer the weight, then raise. Like this leg can stay bent for a while. And then that work that we did, right? That bent leg, it's like it's standing on the brick. Push the heel and suck the hip of the standing leg in as you're straightening it. Okay, that's the key. Okay, one more round, this way. One more round, okay? <clears throat> Feet together, eyes level, chest up, big step back, left leg. Okay, reach your arms up and now bend your front leg for Virabhadrasana one. Stay low in your right hip, right buttock down, hinge forward, connect the abdomen and thigh and now shift the weight. Learn how to shift the weight. Okay, then shift the weight, transfer the weight fully onto your right leg there, as if the brick was underneath that foot. Virabhadrasana, three. And then with control, bend the leg. Virabhadrasana, one. Tadasana. Arms by your side, chest up, stabilize, steady yourself. Last time, second side. 
big step back with your right leg and arms up virabhadrasana one bend your left knee dip down okay hinge forward abdomen and thigh connected and now shift the weight forward shift it forward transfer onto that standing leg and like there was a brick under there push the heel stand up in the hip raise the lifted leg up virabhadrasana three and then bend stay low in the hip virabhadrasana one and tadasana okay now from here to cool yourself off to settle yourself go for a resting uttanasana stand with your buttocks on the wall your legs a little bit forward so the legs will be angular and do give yourself a little bit of width between your feet okay exhale completely and come forward let the back of your neck go head go you can cross the arms and then just allow the elbows to be a weight and lengthen your torso down okay let go of any tension through the back of the neck eyes soft and breathe Okay, equalize the touch through the underside of each foot. So see that the weight is even. And then as strongly as you press into the heels, slide the buttocks up the wall. And then release, receive the release through the side trunk. And then be here, breathe. Inhale, exhale. at some point you can change the crossing of your forearms and then again give a little tug and lengthen yourself down again as long as what feels kind of appropriate for you just to cool you down. The Virabhadrasana work can be um, definitely warming. Can, it has an intensity to it. And then once you're done, you can bring yourself up and you can go for Shavasana, absolutely or you can go for an inversions practice now. And that would be really a lovely thing to, to transition into at this point. So depending on where you're at, um, both with regards to how much time you have and um, what, you know, what level of inversions you're practicing at this stage, you can add them in now. Okay, but I'm gonna leave you here. So thank you so much for today. And um, I'll see you next time.